Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. We have Dr. Paul Conant in studio with us. We might have been going to overdrive a little. No, we did that yesterday. But it, it's, it's great to have him in person. We're going to be talking to him in just a moment. Uh, you've noticed if you're a PrisonPlanet.tv uh, member, uh, for radio listeners, it's 15 cents a day, five ninety five a month. It funds most of our bandwidth and a lot of our operation. Then you get all my films, my book, Paul Watson's book, expanded extras from the films, behind the scenes, the live video streams of the radio show, archived, a higher quality podcast, commercial free. But we're also taking the hundreds of interviews, hundreds and hundreds. I've done over 40 plus with my guys flying around the country that have never before been seen. And we're posting them on PrisonPlanet.tv. Posted a never-before-seen Willie Nelson, Jesse Ventura interview this week, uh, Dr. Russell Blaylock, uh, brain surgeon, uh, about the uh, chemicals in the food and water, the bisphenol A, the rest of it. That's going up in a few days. But we've got a never-before-seen Rand Paul interview that just went live a few minutes ago at GCNlive.com. There's an article about it that links over to PrisonPlanet.tv and PrisonPlanet.tv. And it's Rand Paul, Thought Crime USA, never before it's seen interview. New Kentucky Senator warns of Obama administration exploiting crisis to ram through a big government agenda. And I'll just tell you, the media was running ads nationally and locally about how dare him come on extremist Alex Jones show. And I had the interview. We done it here in Austin. And I said, you know, I'm going to wait till he wins. I'm not going to ask him to come on anymore. He's scheduled this week or next week. We're not sure. He'll be a senator for six years. It won't be an issue. I'm going to get him on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, and I'm, and I'm to air this interview later. Well, now it's at PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, uh, There's never before seen interview. New Kentucky Senator warns of Obama administration exploiting crisis to ram through a big government agenda. Powerful interview up there at PrisonPlanet.tv. It takes about a minute to sign up, and you get a trial monthly membership, and then download it, burn it to disk, give it to everyone you know. Also, another big story up at GCNlive.com and PrisonPlanet.com by Steve Watson. World Awakens to Criminal Banking Cartel, a key article International destruction, the intentional destruction of the dollar creates massive backlash among those not on board globalist bandwagon. Also, TSA rejects airport molestation complaints. That's at GCNlive.com. Gold sets new record as QE2 devaluates fiat currencies. Also at GCNlive.com by Kurt Nemo. Another story here, drone surveillance program targeting Americans. That's at GCNlive.com uh, uh, right now. Now... I want to be clear as we introduce uh, our guest today here in studio. Back in 2000, they testified before Congress, uh, other scientists and uh, uh, environmental researchers, toxicologists. I've interviewed some of those folks. The vast majority, I think it was over 90 percent of their toxicologists uh, at the uh, EPA, uh, also the FDA had scientists send letters. The vast majority said sodium fluoride is deadly poisonous, increases cancer. So it's not like there's just a few medical doctors or scientists or toxicologists saying this. This is the vast bulk. And uh, Dr. Conan, who's always you know up on the latest info, he can correct all my numbers and go over it. But he has the new book out, The Case Against Fluoride, a new uh, look at the scientific evidence, how hazardous waste ended up in our drinking water, and the bad science and powerful politics that kept it there. Paul Conant, Ph.D., James Beck, M.D., medical doctor and Ph.D., uh, and others that uh, wrote wrote this uh, book, and it's got a nice uh, you know, bibliography for you to check out all the facts. This is the real science, and we're going to discuss this because you, even if you filter your water, you're bathing in it. Or it's, it's being sprayed now as a pesticide on the foods, on the crops, and then it bioaccumulates. But instead of Alex Jones talking about this, we go to Dr. Paul Conant. Uh, he is the director of the Fluoride Action Network, FAN, fluoridealert.org, and the executive director of its parent body, the American Environmental Health Studies Project. He has spoken and given more than 2,000 presentations in 49 states and, and 52 countries on the issue of waste management. He holds a bachelor's degree from the University of Cambridge and a Ph.D. in chemistry at Dartmouth College and is a retired professor of environmental chemistry and toxicology at St. Lawrence University. He lives in Canton, New York. Again, fluoridealert.org. Congratulations on your book and your tireless efforts, sir. Thank you, Alex, very much indeed. 
So you've got the floor. Tell us about your awakening, the basic science. Uh, you know, go over the fact that most of the even government scientists are saying, get this out. They've approached the government, but it, but still the, the, these interests lobby millions of dollars, even in small towns, to get it in the food, get it in the water, to give the kids the fluoride pills, the toothpaste. I mean, they are just pushing this. Absolutely. Well, if people go to our webpage, they'll find over 3,000 professionals, dentists, doctors, uh, nurses, all kinds of professionals involved in health, environment, and so on, have signed a statement calling for an end to fluoridation worldwide. So I've been researching this for 14 years, and I didn't want the issue because uh, 14 years ago, I was very busy teaching chemistry and working on the waste management that you've just talked about, and that was taking up most of my weekends and holidays. But my wife put down this bunch of papers on my desk and said, dear, would you read these? I said, what is it? She said, fluoridation. I said, take that away. These people are crazy. Yeah, Dr. Strangelove. Yeah, absolutely. That, and that's what most people have been brainwashed to believing. And it's one technique to keep the average person, the journalist, the scientist, the doctor, the dentist away from the literature. Because if someone with an open mind reads the literature, they will be appalled, as I was that afternoon 14 years ago. And I remember saying to my wife as we were walking to the village council to discuss this, they were deciding whether to continue it or not. I said, this is going to be easy. This is going to be easy. When people hear what I read this afternoon, there's no way they're going to continue that. However, it took us seven and a half years to get fluoride out of our little village of Canton, New York, because all the dentists came in with their white coats on and the doctors and so on, and people were saying... And the AMA oh. the, and, and uh, the uh, you know, major uh, organizations, uh, they are all on record paid off by the chemical industry. Absolutely. And, and in fact, the key moment in the history of this, Alex, was in 1950, when the U.S. Public Health Service endorsed fluoridation. No trial had been completed, practically no health studies had been published, and yet they endorsed it for the whole country. And within a few, a one or two years, all these professional organizations, the ADA, the AMA, the APHA, and so on and so on and so on, they all rolled over like a, a, a string of dominoes, uh, again, with no science on the table. So it wasn't scientific in 1950. And when people read our book, The Case Against Fluoride, they'll find it's not scientific today. They're, they're behaving just like industry, polluting industry. The first thing is deny, deny, deny. Well, I'm not an uh, environmental you know, expert. I'm not a, a, a PhD in environmental chemistry and toxicology a doctor, but I can read the mainline studies. And one of the most studied things, going back to even the 20s, was sodium fluoride. And I've read the studies, University of Texas from the 30s, about increases cancer, causes IQ reduction, we've given it to rats, causes infertility. And there are literally, from China, England, the U.S., Canada, thousands of studies. I mean, the, the, and these are prestigious organizations. They know full well, and, and for anybody that doubts it, just search the term fluoride cancer. And it'll be the U.S. government going, yeah, it at least doubles cancer in boys mm -hmm. and bone cancer. I mean, they know. Uh, so please continue. Yes, well, the, the um, most of the studies that have been done on health effects, and it's, you're absolutely right, there is no argument that fluoride causes health problems, health effects, because millions of people in India and China, parts of Africa and Mexico, which have high natural levels of fluoride, have been injured, seriously injured. It's a scourge. It's a scourge. And, and so the only argument then is whether there is an adequate margin of safety between the doses which we know cause harm and the doses that people are going to get. But it bioaccumulates. It bioaccumulates and the doses, and remember, once you put it in the water, you can't control the dose. You can't control how much water people drink. You can't control how much they get from other sources. And you're right, too. They're now using sulfuryl fluoride as a fumigant on foodstuffs in warehouses. And that, too, leaves residues of fluoride. And today, the Center of Disease Control said that 41% of American children, 41% of American children between the ages of 12 and 15 have dental fluorosis. And that's the f indicator that the child has been overexposed to fluoride. And this is the government. This is the government that promotes fluoridation, is admitting, whoops, 41% of our kids have been overexposed to fluoride. But it only hurts the teeth. Doesn't hurt anything else, for which they have no scientific evidence, but 
That, In fact, it's to the contrary. It's to the contrary, yes, absolutely. I mean, the thing that concerns me most, and one of those facts I learned 14 years ago, was the level in mother's milk is extremely low as far as fluoride is concerned, extremely low, 0 0.004 parts per million. This means... The body thinks it's bad and is, and is designed to filter it. Absolutely. Um, this means a bottle-fed baby in Austin or any other uh, uh, town that's fluoridated is getting... 250 times more fluoride than nature intended. But, but what about the studies that, that show at 10 to 20, it's in that spectrum, yeah. if, if, if a young mammal, this is rats, guinea pigs, humans, rhesus monkeys, are given it, there's an overall IQ reduction uh, of 10 to 20 points. I mean, this is devastating. Well, these are studies from mainly from China. There have been about 18 from China, another one from Iran, I I Mexico, and um, uh, India. And yes, they have found a lowering of IQ associated with fairly moderate exposure, like 1.9 parts per million. And I went to the two China, villages in China where they establish that level. So if you're lowering IQ at 1.9 parts per million in a study group of a few hundred kids, you don't have anywhere near an adequate margin of safety to protect the whole. Well, many U.S. cities have two, three, four. The average is what, about one part per million? And again, from, from I mean, studying fluoride on the periodic table, you correct me if I'm wrong, isn't this one of the worst things to bioaccumulate? I mean, it's really good at that. Well, no, you have to distinguish between fluorine, which is the most reactive element in the periodic table, and fluoride, which is the compound, which in, in, in terms of chemistry, it's lost all its fury. You know, it's a fairly stable. This is like co comparing chlorine gas, which everyone knows is toxic. The chlorine in your pool. Uh, yeah, and sodium fluoride, which is common salt. So that's what it means to compare fluorine with fluoride. But the catcher and the real worrying thing is that fluoride is extremely active biologically. All right, stay there. That's what Dr. Blaylock says. He says it ties in and boosts everything else. We'll be right back. Are the threats of a biological attack to the U.S. real? If biological warfare is real, what should I know before it happens to protect my family? The answers to the unthinkable are inside a new book by Christian patriot and author Sam Adams, Pale Horse, How to Survive a Chemical or Biological Attack. Inside what's been called the must-have manual for surviving the attack and mass panic that will follow, you will learn what the actual biological and chemical threats are, how to respond to events that are almost certain to happen, what the government's response is likely to be. How some will take advantage of the chaos and exactly how you should prepare to get Pale Horse, how to survive a chemical or biological attack in hard copy or immediate digital download. Go to BioWarSurvival.com or call 877-327-0365. That's 1-877-327-0365 or buy online at BioWarSurvival.com. That's B-I-O-W-A-R Survival.com. This is not your father's BioWar Survival Handbook. Tyranny is here. The grim future foretold in 1984 has become reality. It really says that the state is God. The United States is now recognized globally as one of the most oppressive police states on Earth. This film conclusively proves the existence of a secret network of FEMA camps now being expanded nationwide. This documentary exposes how the continuity of government program has established an all-powerful shadow state. Police State 4 chronicles the sickening depths to which our republic has fallen. Prepare to enter the secretive world of emergency dictatorship. Body scanners, sound cameras, citizen spies, stage terror and cameras on every street corner. It's only the beginning of the New World Order's hellish plan. The police state isn't coming. It's here. Secure your copy today at Infowars.com or see it online in the highest quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. Good day, Jim Newcomer from Midas Resources, November 9th, 2010. Gold opened this morning at 14.18.40. A one-ounce gold coin can be purchased for 14.54.93, 7.27.46 for a half ounce, or 3.63.73 for a quarter ounce. That's 14.54.93, 7.27.46, or 3.63.73. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, warning of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. CBO is drawing a parallel between U.S. economy and the Greek economic meltdown. Debt to GDP climbing to an 